Today we're building an impossible dovetail cutting board. I love watching Puzzle Box videos and the impossible dovetail is one that has locking joints on all four sides, so it looks like you can't even assemble it. But I want to take that idea and scale it up and make it look even cooler. Let's build something awesome. This is a lot of cutoffs from when I used to make cutting boards when I was trying to make money and a side hustle to become a full-time content creator. So excuse me if I shed a tear when I'm pulling these out. Oh yes, I remember you old friend. Hello black walnut, my old friend. Let's make some cutting boards again. <laughs> All right, enough weirdness. Let's mill some wood. So I'm gonna start off with the thicker boards and get these glued up and I am using a waterproof glue to make sure that it stands up to washing and use in the kitchen. While those boards are drying, I'm gonna head inside and start setting up the computer programs that'll let me do the CNC cutouts and all the 3D designs. At first I drew a model in SketchUp of what I thought the impossible dovetail would look like with the joints on all sides. But that's like Beethoven and I'm still trying to learn chopsticks. So I modeled up a small prototype single sliding dovetail design in Fusion 360. Now I'm totally new to cutting in three dimensions. All the work on my X-Carve CNC from Inventables has been just 2D pattern and shape cutting so far. So it took a while to figure out the CNC side of Fusion and I was ready to start testing. Now it's time to find out if I can actually make a dovetail work on the CNC. Having one that actually fits nice and tight, that will still move, but not have enough slop that it jiggles around. So that's gonna be the challenge. Let's see if we can do it. All right, so working with the CNC and working with Fusion 360 for the first time to make my toolpath has been a bit of a challenge. And I actually ran several different shapes and designs or several different runs. So what I've realized is that uh, I needed to calibrate my machine a whole lot better than it was because I never needed that level of accuracy before. And also I was being too aggressive, much too aggressive. I think I got it figured out and I think it's gonna work now. All right, I'm gonna do the test cut and it's kind of awkward because I have to leave this in place in case I have to make adjustments. But I have the male dovetail piece and I just cut the ends off it so I can slide it in here. And now we'll see if it uh, fits into the female side. <laughs> That's not even close. <laughs> wow, that is so far off. So I'm gonna have to go into the program, figure it out and just work through it because there's a bunch of settings in there about what to leave and offsets and all these things. And uh, apparently I messed that up. So I'm gonna go in there, try to figure this out and then I'll come back and see if we can make it work. All right, so I ended up actually remodeling the entire thing, but I think I have it right now. So I've got it to the point now where it will just slide in. Oh, that is a good fit. And you can see it slides nicely, uh, but there is a little bit of a gap. You can see some gaps around there, a little bit more than I would like, but I'm a perfectionist, so what can you do? I think we're good enough to go to the next level, which is to make a full-sized sliding dovetail into the cutting board of one of those ones I glued up earlier. We'll see how that works and then gear up to do the impossible joint. So the first glue up is dry and I have started taking some of these out. So the next step, I need to get this flat. You can see this has a very rough surface to it, but first I'm gonna get these out of the clamps and clean them up before I hit the planer. So 
So now each of these is nice and smooth on each side and it's parallel. And now we can move on to step two, which is making the ingrain cutting board. So these are long grain. These would look great just as is. This could be a nice cutting board. But if you cut it into sections and then turn it 90 degrees, that's how you make an ingrain board. So I'm gonna go do that on the table saw and that's gonna let us get into the next step. All right, let's get cutting. All right, here are the blanks for the boards. And I do have these turned on end so you can kind of see what the end grain is gonna look like. And with end grain, especially with walnut, it can have some pretty crazy patterns in here. And if you turn it certain ways, it can make diamonds and different kinds of shapes as you look at it. I actually did a video where I made a diamond cutting board if you wanna check that out. But I don't want that here because I want the eye to go to the edges and the dovetail feature, not to the top. So I'm gonna rearrange it so that it doesn't really draw the eye as much. Uh, I've got the cherry one, then the other walnut. So I am gonna go ahead and glue these up and then we can start doing some prototyping for the CNC design that we did earlier. So these boards are pretty flat coming off of the drum sander. So what I'm gonna do is take these over to the CNC and actually use a surfacing bit on these to get each side completely parallel with the other. And that will just go through and basically take a little bit off of each side. I can square them up on the table saw and have them ready for the dovetail joinery. All right, it is time to do the first actual cut on an ingrain board. I gotta be honest, I am <laughs> very nervous about this. I've done some practices and stuff and I think it's gonna go okay, uh, but you never know. So I'm gonna do the tool path. So I'm gonna cut the, uh, the male side first actually, then we'll cut the female side on the walnut board and we'll see if they slide together. But uh, I don't know, I feel pretty good about it. We'll see what happens. All right, the first cut is done. <laughs> the, the CNC is buzzing in the background because I can't turn it off or I'll lose the position. But I just wanted to let you guys know, I did it for you. All this dust, I left the dust shoe off just to get those sweet time lapses, but I'm not gonna do it again. So now I'm gonna switch out to the dovetail to get that cut, and then I'm gonna switch out and go into the next board. It's looking good so far. <laughs> Other than that dust, this is driving me crazy. All right, this one turned out really nicely. The lines are nice and crisp and the dovetail, there's no tear out there, everything is flat. So this went really well. So now all I gotta do is clean off the CNC from all that dust, put the dust shoe on there, and then cut the complimentary female dovetail on the walnut board, and then we can do the test fit. But it's looking good, I'm digging this. All right, just got done and now I'm going to try the dry fit. Uh, I have to leave it in place because if it doesn't fit, then uh, I have to do some more machining, but the test piece fits, so this should fit. This should fit. <laughs> what? Ah, let's measure this and see what's going on because this does not look like it is fitting at all. This is five, 
inches and 13 thousandths. And this is 4.98. So what is that? 32, how am I 32,000? <laughs> okay, so I'm 32 thousandths off apparently. Missed it by that much. Uh, which is significantly more than I should be. I'm just gonna keep running this until uh, it expands. So I'll just take off a little at a time and then test it. Uh, but clearly this is a little bit too small. But it's better than the alternative. <laughs> All right, uh, since we were at the desk, you probably already know, I did take a little, uh, just the beginning to see if it would fit and check this out. Oh, <laughs> this fits so nicely. Oh, this looks cool. So I'm super happy with how this is working, uh, but I just had an idea and I am now gonna do something different with the project. So I wanna have some magnets to hold this in place. So I wanna figure that out and then we can go start working on the impossible dovetail. All right, I got the magnet all worked out here and it works pretty well, though it could be a little bit stronger. So I may have to go with a bigger magnet for the larger one. And speaking of the larger one, it is now time to start on the impossible dovetail joint. I've got two little blocks that I have glued up and made square. And it's important that these are square. You'll see why in just a minute. So I definitely want to try these out as test pieces first because there's a lot more complexity than with just the sliding dovetail. Yes, yes, yes! Check this out, this is so cool. I got it assembled. The fit is almost exact. And I tell you what, it is really tight. I'll do some close-ups. You can see uh, the grain and how tight it is. There are not any gaps. I am extremely happy with this. And here's how the impossible joint works. You can see it looks like four separate joints, but really it is just two that are cut at 45 degree angles. So you can slide them when you apply the pressure diagonally. Pretty cool trick. But I am ready to go full scale, and what I'm going to do on the full size board, instead of just having one and I was going to make it wider, I'm going to do three dovetails across. It's going to look crazy, so it'll look more like an actual dovetail board than what my original idea was, which was just one wide one, which I don't think would have had the same effect. After looking at the single dovetails versus the three, I had to go with the three. The modeling for this one was a bit intense though. This is about a half hour of modeling cut into the short clip. But my main concern is that with three dovetails per side, any poor fit or error might just make this whole thing not work at all. And after I finished the modeling, I just needed to do a little more work on those blanks. So the boards are prepped and ready for the CNC. So what I did on the blanks is I put some little trim of just, uh, it's just poplar, and I used some blue tape and CA glue to attach it there. And as soon as it goes through there, it should have support, so it shouldn't blow out. This should help protect that, so we'll see if it works or not, or if it just blows it off. But now I am ready to start the machining on the impossible dovetail. We'll see how it goes. The first round of machining on the base is done. I'm gonna pull it out, but it looks like it turned out really nicely. Uh, the back end did blow off the little strips, but it looks like these did a really good job at uh, everything else stayed on and there is no blowout. So it's gonna be super clean in the final product. So those worked out really awesome. Let's throw the walnut top in there and we'll get to milling that. And that's where the fun comes in and trying to get the fit. This is the easy one. All right, guys, we are like right here. This, I, I am a little nervous because this like right now it fit just, it's barely starting to fit. And I feel like 
I just, I pushed it in about like an inch and it was just starting to bind up. I'm just super scared if I get it in here that it's gonna, it's, I'm not be, gonna be able to remove it and not even be able to close it the right way. So I think I'm gonna err on the side of just getting one more pass at it. I've already done like four or five passes. One more pass to hopefully free it up enough and not have a bunch of gaps. I hope this will be the one. Let's see. If it passes this first one, then I'm, I think I'm just gonna take it all off. Oh, there we go. There we go, there we go. All right, Let's see if this goes by. Oh, it's still catching a little bit. Oh, it's past them and it's going. I'm gonna take all the poplar strips off, but leave it in the, the thing and see how it works. Should I do that? No. Mm. Ah, I'm gonna push it a little bit more. Ah, there's so much friction here. I knew this was gonna be an issue. Ah. All right, it just hit me that uh, I saw the rubbing is happening, like I said, because there's so much more surface area. But I'm not really concerned about the surface in the middle. All I want is the outside to look nice and crisp. So what I can do is come in here and relieve some of these edges so that there's not as much rubbing. I'm gonna try to do some sanding and, you know, spend a few hours just really massaging the fit, if you will. All right, I just spent like an hour sanding everything and I think this is gonna be it. Come on, go, 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 go. Yes, that is it. Oh man, that is it. I don't want to slam it all the way in there, but that is it. I'm going to clean this bad boy up and we'll see the final look. <laughs> all right, guys, check it out. Oh man, this thing turned out so amazing and I haven't even put the finish or the oil on it, so I will do that. I'll have some beauty shots for you here in just a minute, but it fits together perfectly and there is so much friction in here. I was worried it was going to slide apart like, uh, like the sliding dovetail did. It did not, uh, but I can look at it now and I'll show you how it opens up. Just slides. Oh, you got to really put some pressure into it and then it slides right open. Check that out. That is so cool. If you don't know how an impossible dovetail puzzle works, then now you do. And if you've never seen a three dovetail puzzle, I've never seen one. Now you have. So I'm gonna sand this up and put some finish on it. I am so happy how this thing turned out. It looks amazing. Hey, if you're loving these hidden and secret feature videos, I've got a playlist queued up for you right there that's got a few more in it I think you're gonna love as well. I wanna give a big thank you to all those folks that have been joining the Builders Club. You can get more information down below, but I'll catch you guys over there on the next video.